What's up guys, today we will be recapping week 6 of the NFL in regards of fantasy football. Some big games this week, there's also been some big moves in the coming days after it. So let's get straight into it and talk about the big winners and the big losers. First and foremost, we'll be starting off with the Andy Dalton fan club. And this week I was playing Anchor, who started off with a rocky 1-4. and five, uh, one and four. She has now moved 1-5 and five as I beat her in a very, very high scoring game, 163.99 plays 147.12. Anchor has got to be livid. I feel bad for Anchor. Um, but let's have a look at these numbers. Um, just so we're clear, Anchor would have beat literally everyone in the league apart from me this week. That's how high scoring this game is. So, Baker Mayfield, 35.75. Josh Jacobs, uh, nearly 14 points. Beach and Robinson, my boy Beach, finally balled out. Uh, 95 rushing yards, two touchdowns, and 10 receiving yards. We love that from him uh, for 26.7. Uh, T. Higgins, 8.75. No score, but good good reps, good targets. Seven targets, seven catches, 77 yards, all the sevens. So, um, bearing in mind we won the game, I'm happy with his production. After breaking into the start and roster for the first time. Marvin Harrison got taken out of concussion in the early in the second quarter or late in the first quarter um, before he'd had um, a reception, so no points from him, which just goes to show how yoked my team was this week. Cole Komet in the London game balled out 70 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. Those of you who watched the game know that that first touchdown was no joke, pure brute strength. But the big, big news was Chris Godwin with his two receiving touchdowns, one of which was long, which has caused bonus leagues in this league. So that double dip of Godwin and Baker Mayfield came in huge. Uh, Santos, the best kicker, I didn't expect them to roll the Jags quite so easily. I thought they'd get stopped for a few more field goals. Um, and to be fair, he would have had like nine points if he'd have made his 40 to 49 yarder. Um, but... Still not outrageously bad. And then the Steelers' defense, who we picked up, 23.94 in that 32-13 win over the Raiders. Um, let's see what we left on the bench, though. Uh, J.K. Dobbins is the big, big story here. If I would have played Godwin instead of Marvin Harrison in the, in the main game, and then I would have had J.K. Dobbins in at my flex, I'd have netted an extra 22 points, pushing my total up to around 186, which is insanity. Um, James Cook, I decided to leave out, even though he's in Monday Night uh, ex Even though he was projected to be ready to suit up for Monday Night Football, I wasn't confident taking the risk. Um, and it's a good thing I didn't, otherwise that would have lost me the game. Simple as. Um, I don't think I could have taken out any running back on one. Um... Josh Jacobs, 13 points. Oh, I probably still would have been okay, but only just, and it would have been a whole host scarier for sure. Um, Anchor didn't really leave anything on her bench, did she? Could have had an extra seven points at tight end. Um, and I think that's it. Matteson would have been an upgrade over Jameer Gibbs. Would the two of them have made up 16 points? No, I don't believe they would have. So she was kind of... um. Stuck between a rock and a hard place there. Um, leaving it to Josh Allen and Brees Hall on Monday Night Football, she was down 60 points, which would have required both of them to beat their best for the season, which they did a good job trying for her, um, but it just wasn't quite enough, and I came out with a dub. You love to love to love to see it. And, of course, the exciting news is Cooper Cup's expected to be back next week. Worthy's back off his bye. Hopefully James Cook... Will be off injury. J.K. Dobbins is back like he never left. We've got a lot of solid players to um, hopefully finish off this season strong. Maybe package them up for a big upgrade somewhere, but I don't know where that upgrade is. Next up, we got Skip versus Tom. Skip rising to four and two. Tom falling to two and four. Let's have a look at the scores here. Um, C.J. Strad with twenty points. Najee Harris, who I traded him, twenty four points. He's welcome. Um, Teddy Spears. Four points. It looks like he got hurt at some point in that game. Um, Terry McLaurin, 18 points. He had a good day. Brandon Ayuk, four points. He's only broken 10 points up once this season. Really not good. Kraft, uh, two points. Not ideal. Um, Jamal Williams, 15.4 points in that uh, Detroit blowout of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Um, Jake Elliott, 10 points, and the Bears' defense, 17 points. Pretty well-rounded game. Alan Lazard on his bench with 23.3. Another player I sent him. Um, could have done some bits for him, but alas, it does not appear to have taken place. Um, I don't think it was insane to start Ayuk because it feels like Ayuk could come good any day, but it didn't happen. Um, let's have a look at um, Tom's team here. Obviously, McCaffrey's still on IR. Derek Kemry, 33 points again. The guy's an absolute animal. Maybe that's who I try and package up and trade for. If, if McCaffrey comes back, I can probably sell that deal pretty easily. Um, Kyler Murray, not bad, 16 points. You could hope for better, though. Amari Cooper, his stock might have just gone up going to the Bills. Um, maybe, maybe he's really good for him now. Neighbours still out. Uh, Ferguson, I think that's by far Ferguson's worst game of the year. Let's have a look here. No, it doesn't want to work. Leave it then. Uh, Travis Etienne also had a really bad day. Brandon Aubrey, huge as always, 49ers defence on Thursday Night Football, did a job. Um, 84 points. You can't help but feel like if he had actually updated his roster and had a running back in and a wide receiver in, even though his flex shit the bed, he probably would have won. Is that the case? Um, Zay Flowers, wide receiver, 16 points, would have got him up to 100 flat in case of neighbours. So he still would have needed to find points of flex, which he didn't have on his bench. So this was an unwinnable situation from him. Um, even he even had the right quarterback out there. You do hate to see it for him. But once once McCaffrey's back, once Neighbours is back, and maybe with Cooper on the move to the Bills, this team could be a little bit scary down the straight. Um, not necessarily for a playoff spot because he's got a pretty poor record, but he could definitely ruin some people's seasons down the straight for sure. Probably mine included. Scott now on a four-game win streak and patch. Who was the only team who was 4-0, I believe, has now fallen to 4-2 and two on a loss streak of two. Let's have a look at the numbers. Um, Jane Daniels, good as gold as always. Saquon Barkley, pretty mid-game. Mason, before he got hurt, an okay game. This is okay. If either of them get a touchdown, all of a sudden they're on 16 points and you're happy. Um, the problem is neither of them did. Metcalf got absolutely clamped up by that 49er defence. Shahid, again, not a bad game. It looks like his team was just missing touchdowns. If It's like Metcalf, Shahid, Mason, Barkley, Pickens. If you get two touchdowns between the five of them, this score is like all of a sudden, what, 109 minimum? Like, you, you, you're going, you're pretty close there. Um, Trey McBride, pretty good for your tight end. You're happy enough with that. Comey Fair, Ben, really good. Saints defense. Despite getting a return touchdown... Woohoo, thank you for the follow. Bahoo, sweetie. Um, despite the return touchdown, three sacks and then uh, a sack and three interceptions, the Saints defense only managed eight points because of their blowout 51 27 loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's insanity. I feel like you could go back and look for a lot of fantasy football and you would struggle to find a team that scored a defensive touchdown got three interceptions and ended sub-10 points. That is insanity. No points at all left on his bench. Dak Prescott had another stinker. Um, yeah, Pash, Pash might be unravelling here. Maybe Jane Daniels is someone we try and make a move for. Interesting. Um, Jalen Hurts, back to his best for Scott here. 29 points. Woo. Woo -hoo -hoo. Um, if you give me two seconds, Antonio, I'll answer that question for you, Ben. Um, Alvin Kamara, 16 points, pretty solid. Zach Moss did not get a lot of work and lost a fumble. Eek. Mike Evans, slow week for him. Jaden Reed had a good game, but did I don't know if he got hurt during the game or not. But still, 10 points is okay. George Kittle, absolute monster this season. Um, we always talk about the top three over the last few years, having been Mark Andrews, um, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle. Also, you had Sam Laporte stepping into that last year which was um, interesting to see who was going to stay at the top. And of the traditional three, only George Kittle really has, which as a 49ers fan, I love to see. Jamar Chase, solid game. You're happy enough with that. The game just wasn't very high scoring. Justin Tucker, 13 points. Packers defense, 22 points. You are laughing. Nice little 23-point win. Next up, I know James has been waiting for this. James, after losing week one of the season, is now 5-1. And also, I believe, first place, yeah, look at that, first place in the league. Um, 
However, who did he beat? Ryan, who has not won a game all year. So, pots and pans. Um, hopefully, James actually gets tested in the coming weeks and um, gets left in a spot where he has to make a decision. Let's have a look at what happened in the game, though. Joe Burrow, balling out. Joe Burrow has, although I'm still not completely sold on Joe Burrow, he's, he's putting up fantasy numbers right now, which is actually all that matters in fantasy football. Joe Mixon had a monster day. Um, the guy seemed unstoppable against New England. Um, not really my surprise. New England taking out a rookie QB. Houston would go get a lot of time on the ball. Um, and when that happens, they tend to run it a lot. It's just the way football works. Trey Sermon, seven and a half points is a little bit low for your RB2. But when Mixon pops off the way he did, you can absolutely swallow a 7.4 from your running back too. Not too worried. AJ Brown, James managed to pick him up when someone else mistaken or not mistakenly, sillily cut him due to his injury. Um, instantly paying dividends now that he's back and healthy. 19.5 points is absolutely massive in that regard. Um, and then Amon Ra St. Brown again, 10 points. This is this is okay. Ideally, you'd want Amon Ra maybe with a score. You want Amon Ra maybe pushing 14, 15, but you're one, so it doesn't matter. Um, Dalton Kincaid, six points, a little bit low for him this season, um, but that Jets-Buffalo game wasn't particularly high scoring, so maybe not a huge surprise. Flex is a position he might have been a little bit worried about this week. I don't know what he's got in his bench. We'll have a look in a minute. McPherson. I personally am not a fan of kicker and quarterback being on the same team. Um, but that is just one of my weird quirks. Um, because as a general rule, if your quarterback's doing a really, really good job, your kicks are going to be limited to PATs. Um, it works for some teams. If you know there's teams that are going to turn the ball over a lot, um, it kind of works. I like to go for like a middle of the road offense that's good at getting yards, but then can't necessarily punch in that consistently um, because they tend to take a fair few field goal attempts. Um, Broncos defense against the Chargers, not horrific. They don't hurt you. They add seven points, but definitely better options available this week. Jared Goff and his bench for 33 points was actually the better decision in that blowout over Dallas. I get why you wouldn't want to take that risk, but. Um, it seems like Detroit maybe had to air their grievances from last year a little bit. Um, Tank Bigby, I know he was a popular um, a popular waiver wire choice going into the week, so I'm not surprised um, that James picked him up. But seven points isn't phenomenal, but he would have been an upgrade over either running back two or flex, so something to consider. Um, other than that, spot on decision making. I mean, he had two guys on a bye, or... IR buy and questionable buy. So we'll be hoping Aaron Jones is back and fully fit next week so that he doesn't have to rely on Trey Sermon. Um, and he'll be looking for Brian Robinson to come back and that will solve the flex and the running back two conundrum. But depth other than that is a little bit of a concern. But I believe both his wide receivers are basically done with their bye weeks. AJ Brown is definitely done. I think Detroit has still got a bye week. Or they might, were they on a bye last week? Detroit might have also been on a bye last week, which might put him in a great spot now to just set his team up and go. Uh, Ryan is just a mess of a team. Puka Nakua, A-Chain, pointless, pointless, pointless. Jordan Love balled out, tried to make it compelling. Um, Connor, really, really poor game in that loss to Green Bay, um, which is rough. Garrett Wilson finally popped off. Is he worth less now that Devont Adams has gone to the Jets? Only time will tell. Mark Andrews finally turned up. First time breaking, I think, four points this season, I read somewhere. Um, Devont Smith also did well. Not as good as his friend AJ Brown, but you take 14 points from your flex. Hopkins, 12 points as a kicker. This is exactly what I'm talking about. 12 points. Cleveland on a good team. But um, they, they can move the ball just enough to get themselves in field goal range. Like... If he would have made that 50 plus, this is like an 18 point day for your kicker on 16 points um, as a team. This is the kind of kicker I like looking for. Um, it's either got to be that or one length offences that score on every single drive. And just because of how many drives they'll get, it's worth it. Bill's defence against the Jets. Taking the team against the Jets is always worth it. 12 points, laughing. Not really anything left on the bench. Um yeah, it's his best spot of quarterback, which is his next best spot. If he'd have act actually optimised his lineup, he might have put James under a bit of pressure here. 14 extra points there would have won him the game. So he absolutely could have won this game if he paid attention. Um, and not even by necessarily making good decisions, just by not leaving people who weren't playing in his roster. So did James maybe get a little bit lucky this week? Let me know what you think down below. 
And then to wrap up this week, an absolute monster showdown again. 143 plays 140. And the most damning thing about all of this, Fraser, as you can see here, was down going into Monday Night Football. By even more than this, I believe. From about there, it must have been. Yeah. Until Monday Night Football, he was down by about, there you go, about 25 points. Um, and we were like, Aaron Rodgers isn't playing that well. He doesn't look that great. Um, Buffalo will probably handle them pretty well. I wouldn't be too concerned. That is Aaron Rodgers' best performance of the season so far, points-wise, I believe. Um, so, I mean, Dad got a bit unlucky. 140 points would have been enough to beat all but three people in the league this week, and he happens to be playing one of them. It it sucks, but that's the way it is sometimes. Lamar Jackson, um, pretty good, but I believe he had Brock Purdy who scored five points more and would have won in the game. Always back the San Francisco boys. Um, Kyle Pitts would have been an upgrade. Unfortunately, Dallas Goddard went out of the hamstring early in the first quarter, um, which fucked him. Other than that, like I mean, he scored 140 points. There's really not many mistakes that can be made when you score 140 points. In fact, he made some good decisions um, in a lot of places here. Montgomery and Irving, who are both kind of... Like, Montgomery isn't officially the lead back in Detroit. They don't officially have a lead back. Um, it would have been easy to mess up a running back decision here, having um, Dowd, who's doing pretty well on the bench. Um, oh, yeah. The largest mistake was not checking his team on Thursday and seeing his kicker was hurt and just picking up anyone. Um, the kicker who replaced Jake Moody for this week scored 12 points. So if he would have literally just gone, I will get the backup for San Francisco, he would have won the game. So you kind of go, well, he didn't really do anything wrong here, but that is a um, make your own coffin now lie in it kind of mistake. 143 points for Fraser, though. Finally optimised his lineup this week, and what a week to do it. Aaron Rodgers, 24 points. Chuba Hubbard, 15 points. Keenan Walker, Kenneth Walker, 17 points. Keenan Allen, 16 points. Drake London, 14 points. Evan Ingram, nearly 10 points. Guys, first week back. Devonte, no, not Devonte Swift. Um, something Swift, I forget his fucking name. 20 points. Young Way Koo, a low week for him, I think. 11 points. And the Chargers defense, 13 points. But nothing left on his bench. This was a, He absolutely left it all on the pitch this week. Granted, three buys and an injured reserve kind of made it impossible to fuck it up. But still, um, you guys have got to go out there and perform. And that they did. That leaves us in an interesting spot. Leads starting to take shape. People are falling down. I believe I read somewhere that in a 10-man league, if you start 1-5, your chances of making the playoff are less than 5%. But, and because team seems to be turning around for the better here and starting to score more and more points, can she turn it around and sneak into a playoff spot on the end? You've got Scott's team, not Scott's team, Tom's team, who, despite having a few injuries, is quite a scary team. If they get fit for the last six weeks of the regular season where he's going to play some of the people who are right near the top of the board, he could absolutely fuck up one or two people's playoff chances right at the last minute. Um, so, yeah, it's all to play for in the Andy Dalton fan club, but we are starting to get a bit more shape. Let's head over to the Ghoulie 12 League and see what happened over there. And here we have it now over in the Ghoulie 12 League, and I am on a three-game win streak, ladies and gentlemen. Three-game win streak. Insanity. Um... Insanity. We are we are cooking here. I've not been great in this league the last few years, but um, we're starting to get there. Josh having an all-time stinker. Started 2-0. Was flexing in the comments that he's 2-0. Four lost streak he's on now. Absolute fraud alert. Let's see what went wrong, though. So, on my side, Stroud, Pollard, Bijan. Huge from them. A little bit reek in the wide receiver room, which actually won me the game last week. Swings and roundabouts. Um, five points from Mike Evans, five points from Brian Thomas. I'm not too worried. I know they'll come good. Fryer Muth having one of his worst weeks this season, only 3.6. Najee Harris, 20 points, though. God, I love him. And the San Francisco backup kicker, who also ended up getting hurt, 12 points. Huge. Eagles defense managed to net me another six versus Cleveland. Love that from them. Could I have done better? 
Lazar's 23 points on my bench would have been a massive upgrade here, making that one even more, more comfortable. Ray Ray McLeod wouldn't have been, and everyone else scored basically nothing. A little bit worried about Nico Collins being on IR. Hopefully I can hang about for him to come back and ride me into that championship. Now let's look at Josh's team. A measly 87 points. Kirk Cousins. Eek. Justice Hill. Eek. Zach Moss. Eek. Jamal Williams. Jameson Williams. Very, very good. 17.7. Got to respect that. Keon Coleman. Eek. I say that. He did better than one of my wide receivers. But we're mocking Josh now. Trey McBride absolutely balled out. 17.6. He tried his best. J.K. Dobbins, who was on the bench of the winning team in the other league. Um, 18.2 points. Uh, big, big game. Not enough, though. Dick of the kicker, 11 points. Got beat out by a backup kicker. And the Colts defense netting him a mere three points against that travesty of a Tennessee Titans team is not great. But surely it was just because he didn't play the right people. Oh, dear God, no. Ironically, his bench running back did double his actual running backs combined. Um, but it wouldn't have made any real difference in the grand scheme of the world. He has been absolutely bent over by Miami imploding at the two injury. Um, Tyreek Hill's now not just able to do anything really. A-Chain got hurt. His entire team's in shambles. Brian Robinson also being out this week was a, just another weapon he was missing, which meant he was left to choose between Justice Hill, Zach Moss, and Rishon Johnson as two of his three running backs. Um, fortunately, he knows he made the right decision playing Kirk Guns over Dak Prescott because Dak had a stinker. But um, I'm sure he's happy for his bye week to be over and he's probably praying for Tua's return. Next up. Oh my goodness, look how close this game was. 0.58 in it. Wow. That's got to hurt Tony, who was who was on a little tear there catching up to end his streak. But Cam extends his win streak to three. He's not going anywhere. Wow, wow, wow. Let's see what happened here. Baker Mayfield balled out. Um, Gibson did okay. Walker did really well. Cooper, not bad. Reed, pretty good. Henry, pretty good. London, really good. Fair Ben and the Bears defense, pretty solid. Jackson, okay. Henry, really good. Dowd, pretty damn good. AJ Brown, amazing. Devonta Smith, amazing. Ferguson, a little low compared especially to Hunter Henry. McConkey, really low compared to Drake London. But Detroit kicker on Bills defense. Like, you look at these scores, of like just doing kind of like rough mental maths, I would have said that this team won. Um honestly, if you wouldn't show me scores and like wouldn't have allowed me to do proper work and out, my guesstimate would have been that this team won. Um, I don't really know where it went wrong, but he's down seven there. Across the running backs, he's up eight, so he's up one. Across wide receivers, he's up another 16. He loses 13 here, so he's only up three. And then, yeah, flex and tight end is what um, won, won this game by, by the looks of it. This right here, because he, he wins kicker and defense. There you go, folks. Never, ever underestimate how important the right tight end and flex are. Were any points left on the bench? No, don't look like it. Oh, he could if he would have played Jordan Love over Lamar Jackson, which would have been insanity, he would have won the game. Um, but on the flip side, like, would Cam have won? I mean, yeah, if he'd played Evan Ingram, he'd have won by more points. If he'd played Caleb Williams, he'd have had more points. I think optimised lineups, Cam still wins here. Um, but that's got to hurt losing by such a, a small margin, especially when you can see for a little bit here, Tony had peaked above that score. So it means he got above that and then probably the defense lost him some points, which uh, then had him finishing under. That's really got a sting. Next up, we've got Josh versus Ian. Ian having another generational hoon by the looks of it. Blown out 155 to 100. Eek. What happened here? Oh my god, he had the Cowboys defense which cost him points. He could have scored probably about 160 easily if he wouldn't have 
trusted the Cowboys defense. PSA, if you're using the Cowboys defense in fantasy football, you're a moron at this point. They can't seem to defend for shit. Stop using them. Um, but let's have a look at what happened here. Hurts, 20 points. Swift, 20 points. Brees Hall, 20 points. Godwin, 35. McLaurin, 23. Kittle, 22. Oh my God, just everyone. One, two, three, four, five, six guys broke 20 points. At that point, it doesn't matter what anyone else does, does it? At that point, like, if you just say six guys get 20 points, that's 120, which would have been enough to win the game. All of these guys broke 20 pretty comfortably. Obviously, God, we're nearly doubling it. It doesn't matter what these guys do. That's insanity. That's really impressive. Can't really expect there to be any points on the bench. There was, though. If he'd have played Gay instead of McPherson, he could have scraped out an extra three. But other than that, I think he was uh, maxed out, which is impressive. Um, really, really fuck all Ian could do then. Herbert, 13. Hubbard, 15. Spears, 2. Deontay Johnson had a good game. Uh, Metcalf was okay in the PPR league, but still not great. Andrews finally popped off. I don't know how Ian was still running with him, though. Uh, Kirk, 7 points. It's okay from a flex. I mean, beat his flex. Young Way Koo, 12 points. Pretty good. 49ers defense, pretty good. But yeah, there was just not enough left. Um, he would have got closer with um, Allen instead of Metcalf. And with the Bucks defense, he would have been another 10 points closer. That would have been another 24 points. But he's still 30 points shy of a dub there. Ian was cooked from the get-go, ladies and gentlemen. Next up. Oh, Christ. What happened here? 58.8. Surely someone's hurt and he's forgot to check his lineup. Surely. Oh, he played Cook, hoping he'd soup up, but he didn't. Oh, he's had that. He's had a a decision was made here. Okay, so Justin Fields, twenty four points, absolutely fine. Saquon Barkley had a poor game that put him off on a back foot. James Cook then not suiting up really did a number on him. Brandon Ayuk another stinker. This is the one that really stings. Chris Olave got concussed in second quarter, late in the first quarter, um, and fumbled on the same play. So he caught the ball, turned, took two steps, got obliterated, instant concussion, ball went flying. That's rough. Um, Craft three and a half points, not ideal. DJ Moore six points, not ideal. Elliot eight points isn't horrific. Falcons defense five again, not horrific. Just no one showed up. Only what? Only one guy broke ten points on his team, and that was his quarterback. Any points left on his bench? Brock Purdy would have been a point four upgrade. Shahid for eight point three would have, of course, been a massive upgrade over Alave, but it wouldn't have really changed anything. What well, I'd have had him tapped out at like his optimum lineup here this week would have been what 70 points? No, not even 62. Eesh, that's not ideal. Um, he's got three quarterbacks on his roster, he's got a hurt Dallas Goddard, he had a running back on a bye. It's rough, it's rough. Um, he'll be hoping to bounce back, bounce back from this and just forget it happened because. He's not really made any mistakes. He's got incredibly unlucky, and all of his guys have had a shit week the same week. Oof. Um, impossible to lose, essentially, to that. But he still went out and scored 140 points just to stunt on him a little bit. Jane Daniels, insane. Matson and D Gibbs did a pretty good job. Just so we're clear. Oh, no, them three alone couldn't win the game, but once you had Diggs in, they win the game. Um, again... 43 points from the wide receivers is pretty damn good. Flex and tight end. Yeah, no. As a complete polar opposite over here, everyone other than the defense broke 10 points on this team. These are the polar opposites of what can happen with, I would say, pretty evenly matched strength teams. Everyone over here didn't show up. Everyone over here did show up. And that is the difference. And the answer to the difference of how much can, difference can that make. 
about 85 points worth of difference. Oh, you got a feel for uh, Joss on that one. I don't think there's anything he could have done. Oscar finally gets a win after, I believe, a four-game losing streak. Um, beating out Luke. Let's have a look at what happened here, then. Alan, Kamara, Brown for the Bengals, Higgins, Lamb, Laporte, Flowers. Yeah, he just, again, everyone finally turned up for him. We've been saying he has a good team and he's been really unlucky to have not won more games. They all finally turned up for him. Shout out Oscar for finally getting that dub. Stevenson didn't play. Um, that's the only thing that really cost him. Again, 126 is a pretty good score. If Stevenson plays and gets even his average, they probably win this game, don't they? I don't know what Stevenson's average is. Uh, da, 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 da. He's averaging around about 10-ish points. So if Stevenson would have played, he probably would have been close to winning this game. Connor's letting down a little bit of a stinker. Other than that, there's not really anything you can do. Would Lockett have won in the game? Not really. Um, Trevor Lawrence, I don't believe so. No, yeah, Jared Brough scored 25 points. Yeah, I mean, he was just cooked from the get-go here. Nothing he could really do. Eesh. That's a really good matchup, though. It's one that sucks to lose just because of the nature of it. And then my favourite segment every week, let's all laugh at Wag. He's on a three-game losing streak. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, drop in another generational stinker. Don't think that man's broken 80 points up for the last three weeks. Let's see where it all went wrong. Murray, 12 points. Montgomery, 21. Mason, sub 10. Tolbert, sub 10. Robinson, barely 10. Strange, 2 points. Mooney, 7. Aubrey, 11. I mean, when Brandon Aubrey is your third highest point scorer at kicker, and it's not even his best week of the season, you know you need to be a little bit concerned, don't you? Um, Jets defence. Why on God's green earth are you playing the Jets defence is a question to be asked. Um, on the flip side, Joe Burrow, 19. Joe Mixon, 27. Josh Jacobs, 12. Jamar Chase, 12. He played more than Harrison Jr. got knocked out in the in second quarter. Zero. Didn't matter, though. Dalton Kincaid, 11. Tank Dell, 18. McGoughlin, 9. Chargers defence, 7. Just every single position other than the guy who didn't play. I believe he won. Uh, wins by 8, wins by 6, wins by 3, wins by 4, loses by 10, wins by 9, wins by 12. Oh, he lost at kicker as well. Cool. Yeah, absolutely decimated. Let's all laugh at Wag down in the comments down below. Um, but there we go. That is it from Fantasy Football this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.